Yo, what's up guys? It's your man Foriam again, back with a video for V Rising. Today, I'm gonna share my ultimate endgame berserker build with you guys. It's a fantastic build for PvE, solo PvE and duo PvE, but it can also work very well in PvP situations. So I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks for that as well. But in this video, I'm gonna talk about pretty much everything you need to know about it. From the gear I'm using, the weapons and armor, which blood type you should take to the battlefield, and of course also which abilities which you should use in certain situations. Against bosses, big packs of mobs, some for PvP even, so let's get right to it. Alright, so before we get started, I want to point out that this is my endgame version of my Berserker build. The early game version can be found in the top right of the screen, but this one basically got tweaked and improved over the time from mid-game till end-game. The setup is pretty easy, it doesn't have many requirements, and the explanation for it is also quite simple, so let's start off with the gear. So I currently have a gear score of 82, and this is because I'm wearing the most endgame gear pretty much, a full Blood Moon set, but you can also do this with way lower level items. Basically, this one gives me an increased movement speed of 6%, increased attack speed and increased gear level by 1, as well as a Jewel of the Wicked Prophet, which further increases my movement speed and also adds up to my weapon attack speed and spell life lead. So you can tell that this is a pretty aggressive, high lifesteal build with a lot of magical and melee damage. Then if we look at my stats right here, I'm currently level 82, maximum health of 456, physical power, crit chance 5, damage 150%, spell power 5, and right here also 150%. Some basic resistances because of my cape right here, this is the Immortal King's Mantle, but basically if we check out this closet, I have the same mantle right here, which you can actually craft at the tailoring station. So the weapon which we're using for this build are basically the Sanguine Axes. Once again, you can work with lower level axes as well. Dark Silver Axes, Merciless Iron Axes, they will all work just fine because this build is actually made for both mid game and end game. But you just want to make sure that you have any type of axes that have both the Frenzy ability as well as the Axe Strike. Both of these are fantastic. Let's start off with Frenzy. So basically this one allows you to engage and disengage from combat fairly easily with this small leap which also deals quite some damage. While with the X strike you basically can stun an enemy if you hit them right in between their eyes. If you hit right on target it's basically a stun but all the rest gets slowed down for one and a half seconds. So this is really fantastic and only comes with an 8 second cooldown, while the Frenzy itself gives you increased attack speed after you've used on a successful hit, so this one also works very well in combination with all the rest we're gonna talk about right now. So let's move on to the abilities. So you can actually use many different abilities for this build. You can tweak it to your liking, try out different things, but let's just cover the basics and then talk about some optional spells. So first off, we have Blood Rage. This shields self and nearby allies for 110%. So it's not only interesting for solo, but also duo and squad PvE, let's say. Increases your spell power and attack speed by 25% for almost 5 seconds. Then we also have the Chaos Volley, which I use most of the time because it just travels very fast and deals a lot of magical damage. So basically that is your ranged damage. But of course, if you're playing with other people or need an extra little bit of survivability, you basically want to go with the Sanguine Coils as they also deal damage from afar, but instead can also heal you a little bit or an ally if you hit them with it. It is a little bit difficult to hit moving targets, but basically this one can definitely add a big time to your survivability, so it's a very good alternative option. Then for PvP, you might want to go with the Frost Bats, because these are pretty interesting. If you hit your targets with it, you will basically slow them down, but if you hit them another time, you will basically freeze them for two and a half seconds, what I think is pretty impressive. This is definitely going to be a scary one, either if you are chasing down targets or simply want to run away from them a lot easier. Then for the ultimate, I'm currently using the Arctic Leap because on the level which I am right now, I don't really need the extra survivability. But basically this one allows you to almost erase everything from the battlefield with one click of a button, hits like a truck on all the enemies and also freezes them so you have a free game let's say on taking down every single one of them if they still manage to survive. 
Then of course we also have different abilities which you could take for other situations like like with PvP if you want to have an extra engage or disengage you could go with Merciless Charge allows you to dash very far away to hit an enemy, stun them to the wall or disengage pretty much to escape from sticky situations. While for tanky PvE situations if you need the extra survivability I think you should definitely go with the Spectral Guardian. This Spectral Guardian will shield both you and allies in the area and at the same time also deal damage to your enemies with these powerful swings. The shield is reapplied every one and a half seconds and the golem will last for seven seconds so this one works very well if there are bosses with like a lot of AoE damage if you really need an extra bit of survivability. So for dual PvE I most of the times go with both the Blood Rage and the Sanguine Coil while if I'm playing solo I'm going with the Chaos Volley instead. And the ultimate, I just really prefer the Arctic Leap because it just hits like a truck. As you can see, this leap has a pretty big radius, so if you stomp in the middle of a battlefield, freezes everything, which is, in my opinion, very powerful. Even vampires, so for PvP, you can freeze everything for 30 seconds. Oh, we almost forgot to talk about our dash guys. So basically, we're running with the Blood Travel, the Veil of Blood, which works very well in most situations as the distance traveled is a little bit further in comparison with others. I did see some people playing with the Veil of Chaos which basically allows you to dash twice but the distance traveled is not very interesting and you will deal a little bit of damage every time when you uh, travel away but with the Veil of Blood ability you actually have a bonus damage on your next strike and it even heals you for 5% of your maximum HP. So I personally think this is hands down the most interesting one for this specific build. Anyways, let's move on to the blood because this build becomes so much stronger with it. So basically, I have a brute in my base, a uh, almost 100% brute blood character in my prison cell right here. And every time when I go to a boss or uh, want to slay some enemies, I drain its blood to get a 98%. I already have a 100% worker right here as well as a warrior in the back right there but basically this brute blood guys makes this build so much more powerful. So we already talked about the big attack speed bonus we have with different abilities. Well with the brute blood it only becomes better so basically we already have a little bit of lifesteal with uh, spells but right now we get an almost 12.5% primary attack life leech or lifesteal with these swings of our axes. Also an almost 15% increased primary attack speed and gain one gear level. So that makes us 82 right now. By the way guys, seriously, if you are playing with low level gear once again, this is going to work like a charm as well. But the healing received increases by 20 to 35%. In this case, almost a 35% and heal self for 4% of your victim's health when striking a killing blow. So if you take down your enemies, you will heal yourself even more with this buff. And you also have a 6% chance per relative health recovered. So basically, if you recover your health, 6% chance to boost your movement speed by another 20% and your damage for 25%. And guys, I don't have to talk about the 100% Brute Blood right here because I don't have it. But you can clearly see that if we get all benefits from a 100%, you will boost all the effects by another 30% which is going to make this build even more powerful. You will become a wrecking ball on the battlefield. An unstoppable killing machine, let's say. It's very important that if you have high quality blood, you don't want to waste it. So basically, if you use your blood ment, if you're low in HP, you will lose some of it and you will drain the pool very quickly. So what you should do instead to heal off combat or even in combat if you don't take any damage is use a vermin solve instead. This one will also heal you over time, what I think is fantastic also for PvP situations. But once again, every time when we heal ourselves, look at this guys, movement speed increased by 20% and primary attack speed increased by 25 as well. So you can tell that even if we heal ourselves out of combat, we can apply this buff to increase our movement speed and attack speed. Of course, the Vermin Solve is just a cheap and fast solution for healing, but you can also go with something like the Blood Rose Brew or the Blood Rose Potion, as they will heal you for even more, but they are a little bit more tricky to craft. Of course, if we're talking potions, you can even go with a Potion of Rage or a Witch Potion to heal yourself even more as we have Lifesteal with the Spell Power as well as with the melee attacks. But that, my friends, is pretty much it for the potions. Alright, so now that we've talked about pretty much all the basics, all the abilities you need to get your hands on, the weapons and armor which I use for this build and also the blood, 
it is time to move on to the gameplay. To give you a quick summary on how I use the build, basically before I engage my enemies, I use the X-Strike to first stun them, slow them down and deal a lot of AoE damage already. Then I use my Blood Rage before or afterwards to pretty much jump on my enemies, start dealing a lot of damage. And if things become a little bit too tricky, I just disengage with the Veil of Blood or something else, start spamming my Chaos Volley, wait for everything to be on cooldown and rinse and repeat. It is that simple. Of course, every time when you decide to engage, make sure to have your Blood Rage ready. This one will shoot yourself, which works very well in combination with your Brood Blood. Because basically, you become an unstoppable killing machine, guys. Your attack speed will increase, your power will increase. And with the Brood Blood, of course, we also have this primary attack, Life Leech. So it's going to be very difficult in PvE to die, basically, if you're fighting trash mobs with this. Of course, for PvP, if they don't stun you, if they don't use any crowd control, you'll be able to sustain most damage as well. If you have many ranged targets shooting at you and your abilities are on cooldown, you can't really stun them with your X-Strike, what you want to do is spam your Chaos Volley or other means of ranged damage. Basically, this one works fantastic to take out low value targets or of course also the bigger ones. You basically just weaken them with this and then if they fall below a certain amount of HP, you can finish them off with your feet ability. Guys, seriously, don't underestimate this one. Use it all the time, as many times as you can, just to take out different targets, especially high value targets, so you don't have to burn different spells, different abilities to take them down instead. But guys, definitely let me know what you think about this build. Of course, make sure to first find a nice quality Brood Blood, keep it in your base and also craft some potions like the Vermin Solve. I think these are fantastic to keep you up on the battlefield without having to drain your pool. Guys, a big thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking till the end. This is pretty much everything you need to know about my endgame Berserker build. If you have thoughts about it, if you have questions, let me know in the comments down below, of course, if there are things you would do entirely different. If you would work with something else, I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Holy right now, though, it is 4 a.m. out. I want to wish you an awesome day. Of course, if you can't get enough of the videos, there are plenty more in my playlist in the description. But that is pretty much it for this one. I want to wish you an awesome day. Till next time. Peace.